We've got the Cadillac Lyric here, and man, this thing is awesome. It looks like the Batmobile and an Escalade had a bit more than a snuggle, and this was the result. Starting off, we've got these lights that go along here where the grill normally would be. It looks absolutely awesome. Someone was coming out of the movies over the weekend, walked past it, and they were like, is that a car from the movies? Nope. It's just the Lyric, and it is awesome. Let's have a whole look around. Moving around the side, we've got the rims that, well, they look like rims, and our charging door, which I don't know what engineering intern got V3 of Lyric charging door into production, but <laughs> it's the only janky thing of this whole vehicle. Like, just, just, just look at this. <laughs> Anyway, what's in here is very good though. We have a 100 kilowatt battery, which gives us 500 kilometers of range. And we also have 190 kilowatt fast charging. I have had no trouble at all with the range in this thing. And it has been a treat just driving it around. What's not a treat though. So you press here and then there's a tiny plunger that pushes the door out a little bit. And instead of like, you know, pulling the handle, they have another little bit here that you hold on to. It actually doesn't work too, too bad in the front, but in the back, it's kind of just terrible. You don't have the thing there. So you sort of just grab it somewhere. Good. I'm not crazy about it, but at the same time you get used to it. It's worth it to deal with that for the rest of the car. Around back, it gets even stranger. So we have our brake lights down here but our turn signals go up and around. It is very strange, but at the same time, I quite like it and really adds to the Batmobile-ness of the whole thing. Also, to get into the trunk, you press the bottom of this Cadillac logo, opens right up, and we have plenty of storage space in here. You can put down the seats with just a press of the button and the amount of crap I fit in this. I could not have done this in my Golf. Below the floor back here, we have even more space along with our little charging cable and it should be noted that even though these seats are power folding they are not power going back upping so you'll have to do that yourself <gasps> hopping into the back seat it's quite good but it could be improved a tiny bit the biggest problem is that these iso fix spots right here it sort of pushes your butt forward and you can kind of feel the plastic in your arse not quite ideal, but at the same time, seats overall are quite comfortable. And as long as you don't lean back too far, the headroom is pretty good. We've also got two USB type C's, 120 volt adapter, and two little cup holders here. Hopping into the driver's seat, this is one of the most comfortable cars I have ever been in. These seats, even though they don't have quite the amount of bolstering that I would like, are still very comfortable and we do have lumbar massagers in them. All of the controls for your seat are on the door here. It's a little bit strange at first, but you get used to it pretty fast, except for the lumbar and massage controls. It sort of splits between this and the screen and the way that it goes is just strange and everybody's been very confused by it. So many electric cars these days try and reinvent the interior and by reinvent, I mean, just make it terrible. Here though, they have embraced the things that are good about electric cars like touchscreens and lots of software but they've kept the stuff that you know you want to be hard buttons like the climate control we've got these buttons here they feel great these are some of the most satisfying that i've felt in a long while and just stuff like we have the knob for the infotainment we have touch for the infotainment the click on this kind of sucks but that's the only not good feeling button in here and i'll take a knob over no knob for sure and stuff like on the steering wheel, even though there are capacitive buttons, it has really nice feedback. Like you can probably hear it here, like, oh. And as a bonus, your main controls like volume are done with actual buttons instead of the stupid capacitive stuff. One of my favorite details in here are the vent controls, just because they're such a good representation of the sort of older style luxury that Cadillac has in here. While a lot of other electric car makers might even just like give you vent controls and infotainment. Speaking of dumb things in the infotainment, the glove box, uh, you have to go in here and click that instead of just simply opening it, which is really annoying if you wanna just grab something from in there because you need to come in here, turn on the car, wait for it to boot up. Then you need to go to the menu, open it up. Why not just have a handle guys or a little button? Anyway, we've got plenty of storage in here. So we've got a little drawer that is blue 
It also has Andy's spoon in there. We have other blue that's down here, and this is an excellent spot for your subs or falafels or whatever. And we have a nice big spot in here for, in this case, my sunscreen. The infotainment in here is done by Google, which has its ups and downs. So when I received this, it made absolutely no sense. None of this was good at all, but it is saved by one very simple thing. Watch this. Beep, 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 beep. Ha ha! You can reorganize it to your heart's content, and that means that after just a little bit of playing around with it, you can have it set up exactly how you want, and it is just awesome. I have found one bug, the uh, camera app, if you put it down in the hot bar, goes away after you turn the car on and off. There is a very, very large problem though. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Right now, it's fantastic. So look, I can just come in here, I have wireless Android Auto, boop! Phone goes into the wireless charger, we're off to the races. It is great. But in the future, GM is going to be getting rid of it. And I think that is a massive mistake. Why? Well, for one reason, I just like having more choices. But more than that, let's have a look at how Tidal works in Android Auto. We've got the app here. It is overall pretty good. It's working great. I've seen better in some other cars, but overall pretty good. Let's have a look at how GM's implementation of it goes. Yeah, it's entirely non-functional. This, this, this does nothing. I cannot log in. It does not work in the slightest. And that is why I am very concerned about them getting rid of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto because uh, their shit doesn't work. <laughs> when you drive the Lyric, the first thing you're going to notice is that this thing is massive. It's five meters long and just generally a huge honker of a car, which means this 360 camera that they have here is going to be getting a lot of use. This thing, absolutely love it. Before we set off two things, first of all, we have got this beautiful big sunroof that I really appreciate even if it doesn't open up. And second of all, I really love this segue to our sponsor. Thanks to Aralo for sponsoring this video. Are you tired of the hassle and high costs of data roaming when traveling abroad? Say goodbye to those headaches with Aralo, the world's first eSIM store. With access to digital SIM cards for over 200 countries and regions at affordable prices, Aralo makes international connectivity instant and easy. No more managing physical SIMs or searching for free Wi-Fi. And with the ability to receive calls and SMS in your original number, you'll never miss a beat. Join the travel hack revolution and get your eSIM from Aralo at the link in the description. One of the largest problems with a lot of electric cars is that they are afraid to embrace their boatness. It's very tempting, especially when you have like heaps of torque to be like, oh, this is a sporty car. But because of how much batteries weigh, they're always going to be very, very heavy. Like this thing's 2,500 kilos, not a light vehicle. But fortunately, Cadillac have just simply embraced that. They are not trying to make this some sort of a sports car that it isn't. It is just simply a quick car that has very, very nice supple suspension. You're able to go over bumps and stuff, and it is just simply quiet in here and extremely, extremely comfortable in a way that I don't think any other electric car that we've had, especially in this price tier, has come even close to. You know how I said that there's some really dumb Android stuff in here? So we've got our settings menu, and that has like, you know, most of the stuff. We've also got our controls menu, which is different, but has a lot of your settings in it. And the settings menu does not go to the controls menu. It's very, very dumb. All right, let's give this a little launchy launch here. We've got 340 horsepower, traction control off. And it's all right. We have a zero to 60 of 5.7 seconds, which is, well, quite fast by many respects, but for an electric car, it isn't particularly exciting. Next year, they're going to have an all wheel drive version, which will bring that up quite a bit. That one will have 500 horsepower. That said though, this is a very strange electric motor setup. The way this delivers its power is not like any other EV I've been in. Like traction control off, you can't squeak the tires at all down low, probably because like the 275s are massive. But it's weird because once you get around like 70, 80 kilometers per hour, you're able to get that actual like electric push you back in the seat. You don't get that down low. It's strange because a lot of electric cars are running out of gas by the time that this right here is really coming on. This feels a lot more like a V8. 
This right here is very far from a sports car in the corners, but it is a lot better than you would expect. A lot of that has to do with the excellent one pedal driving that they have in this. So it's super easy to be balancing the car mid corner in a way that, you know, an SUV of this size would normally just not be like. When I first got this car, it was in their touring mode or comfort mode, and I was kind of scared driving it because of just how vague all of the controls are. That said, once I got everything into the sport modes, it all feels really quite good, and it's all just quite accurately done. I do have to shout out their drive modes here because like I have the my mode, which is basically sport mode, but without their stupid, you know, sport motor sounds that go all the time, very annoying, but it just automatically goes into the last mode that you're in when you turn the car on. So I can basically just go in here, uh, my mode setup, goodbye. You can go to the third screen, don't have to touch you again. Thank you Cadillac for always going back to my mode. For driving assists, this has some of the best on the market. Like the adaptive cruise, the person in front of you can totally stop and then start going and this will just figure out and it's great. Like you can be going 80 kilometers per hour, there's someone stopped in front of you. I just trust the car to stop. I normally don't. Oh, corner. I find it crazy that I cannot break the rear tires loose at all. Rear wheel drive, super sharp little corner, foot to the floor, nothing. We got the tiniest of chirps. Anyway, back to driving assists. This does have super cruise in it, which for one, I really do not like this big bar here. The steering wheel feels fantastic, but this big piano black thing here, don't love it. That said, if you have super cruise roads around you, it is the best autonomous driving that is on the market right now. I do not trust any other system besides this one to just take me down the highway in a way that I don't feel scared the whole time that the car is operating. That said, the roads that are mapped are incredibly limited, so its usefulness to you will depend entirely on if your commute has been mapped. And that said, even if there is like construction or something strange on the road, it's going to stop working, so you can't really count on it all that much. For the gauge cluster, we have four options, all of which are great. We've got busy mode for all of your information, energy mode for those of you that want to try and get like 520 kilometers of range. Maps so that, you know, the person over here can be fiddling around with the infotainment and you still know where you're going. We also have clean mode and this is a pre-production car, which is why, you know, the forward collision doesn't seem to be working. Maybe the best part of this car though is the sound experience, like overall. So you're just driving down the road. It is exceptionally quiet in here. That is thanks to in part because they have active noise cancellation through the sound system. And the sound system itself is fantastic. This is a 19 speaker system from AKG. And well, let's give it a listen. Play Crab Rave on Tidal. Yes, they are. Oh, this is such a good sound system. I absolutely love it. Now we did measure it and it does start rolling off at about 30 Hertz, but everything before that, absolutely great. Now the surround sound itself is really good. Like you put it all the way up. And as far as I can tell, the slider just does these headrest speakers and it sounds very good. You get totally surrounded in it but the problem is that it's very fatiguing. I ended up just keeping it right down to stereo. You still get great imaging in here and it just stops my ears from hurting a little bit. I think that the problem is that when you have so many speakers, they're all gonna be sort of slightly out of phase with each other. And that means that you're going to have sort of a bad time. That said though, yeah. Now in our measurements, it does have a bit more bass and a little bit less treble than what we would expect from our LMG target curve. That said though, equalizer works great. So if we put it to minus seven on the bass and plus one on the treble, you get it almost perfect. So good job guys. I love having a good EQ. Overall, I really, really like the Lyric. It is just such a comfortable spot to be. You can easily just daily drive this thing and it is such a pleasant experience. So many other electric cars completely fail at like 
feeling traditionally luxurious. And this right here just completely nails that. I really do hope that in the future, GM reconsiders taking away Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, because that would be quite a big brown stain on an otherwise fantastic car. What's even more surprising is the price. This right here, as spec'd, is $70,000 Canadian, which is, for what we have, really, really good. The only problem though, I did mention that this is a pre-production unit and uh, they've not been producing too many of them. They say that they have a couple of kinks to sort out, kind of like, you know, our forward collision system not working, camera just leaving at times. It's all a little bit early and janky feeling. Once they think it's all tip top, it should be hopefully available in quantities. <laughs> Given that I've heard that they haven't had a great time getting their battery plant on the go, it will be seen how available these are, but when you can get your hands on one, I would strongly recommend it if you want a big old electric boat. So the Cadillac Lyric, I absolutely love it, and I hope that more electric car makers really embrace being a big old electric car instead of trying to make it something that it's not. And I also hope that you guys like this video. Hit like, get subscribed, and just have a fantastic old day. I'll see you later. Let us know what cars you want to see.